chapter human health and disease so good health is a state of optimum physical fitness mental maturity and alertness with freedom from anxiety and social well being with freedom from social tensions when the functioning of one or more organs or system of body is adversely affected characterized by various signs and symptoms we say that we are not healthy that is we have disease now disease may be broadly classified into two types that is acquired and congenital congenital so acquired disease are contracted after birth due to various reasons like infection degeneration diet addiction depression etc now these diseases are further of two types that is communicable and non communicable so now communicable disease can pass from one infected person to a healthy one and non communicable diseases remain confined to the person who develops them and do not spread to others so this can communicable diseases can spread and non communicable diseases do not spread now this these diseases are caused by agents other than pathogens congenital diseases are diseases which are which a person has already contracted or at birth so congenital diseases can be of two basic types that is hereditary hereditary or genetic diseases and diseases due to environmental factors so environment now pathogen is an organism that causes certain disease animals and plants bacteria viruses fungi nematodes some algae etc included under pathogens vectors on the other hand do not cause disease themselves but transmit the pathogen from infected person to a healthy person that is spread the disease in this process they themselves remain unaffected so they remain unaffected example female anopheles mosquito now bacterial diseases first is typhoid so typhoid is a conta- contagious disease of intestine called as salmonella typhi the organism of the disease are present in the stool and urine therefore carried by contaminated food and water bacterium enters via mouth live, uh, lives in the intestine and causes lesions in the intestinal walls incubation period of the bacterium is 1 to 3 weeks so incubation period is 1 to 3 weeks sustained high fever that is 39 degree to 40 degree celsius weakness stomach pain constipation headache and loss of appetite are some of the common symptoms of this disease intestinal perforation and death may occur in severe cases typhoid fever could be confined confirmed by vidal test so vidal test is a test from which we can confide typhoid second one is pneumonia second one is pneumonia so pneumonia is a serious disease of lungs characterized by accumulation of mucus characterized by accumulation of mucus or fluid now in alveoli and bronchioles to that extent that breathing becomes difficult so it is caused by streptococcus pneumonia pneumonia or diplococcus pneumonia and haemophilus influenza the onset of pneumonia is usually sudden with a single shaking chill fo- followed by fever pain with breathing on the side of lung involved increased pulse and respiratory rates so a healthy person acquires the infection by inhaling the droplets released by infected person so even or even by sharing glasses and utensils with an infected person so that's how pneumonia is caused now third is dysentery 
So, dysentery is an infection of the intestinal tract causing severe diarrhea with blood and mucus. So, we basically have diarrhea and dysentery with blood and glucose. Fourth one is plague. Plague is caused by a rod shaped non motile bacterium called as Pasturella or yes, Yersinia pestis and is transmitted by the bite of infected rat flea. So, it is caused by infected rat flea bite. That is Xenoplysa chiopis. So, that is Xenoplysa chiopis. Plague is also called as Black Death. So, plague is also called as Black Death. Now, the fifth one. Is diphtheria. Diphtheria is an acute infectious disease of mostly children characterized by development of a grey adherent false membrane over the upper respiratory tract or throat. It is caused by toxigenic strains of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. So now after this we move on to viral diseases. So first is common cold is caused by some hundred types of rhinoviruses. Virus infects nose and upper respiratory passage but not the lungs. Causing inflammation of mucous membrane, there is irritation of nasal tract, nasal congestions, flows of mucus, sneezing, sore throat, hoarseness, cough, tiredness, headache and slight fever. Droplets from cough or sneezes of an infected person are either inhaled directly or transmitted through contaminated object and infect in a healthy person. So this is all about common cold. Moving on to the second one that is mums or infectious parotidites. Mums or infectious parotiditis is caused by a paramyxovirus that is an RNA virus or my, myxovirus parotiditis. Mums causes inflammation of the parotid glands. So this mums causes an inflammation in the parotid glands behind ears. So MMR vaccine is used against measles, measles, mums and rubella. Now the third one after mums comes is measles. That is rubella disease is a highly infectious childhood disease occurring between 3 to 6 years of age. It is caused by rubella virus or polynosa morbillorum. So this is all about uh, viral diseases. Then coming on to protozoan diseases. First is amoebiasis. Amoebiasis. Or amoebic dysentery is a protozoan infestation of upper part of large intestine caused by monogenic protozoan and amoeba histolytica. It is characterized by abdomen pain. So we have an abdomen pain that is the first symptom. Then mild diarrhea alternating with constipation passing out of mucus. Pieces of ne necrotin mucus membrane and blood in feces and feces with cyst. Then coming on to the second part, that is malaria. So malaria is caused by a digenetic, that is have two hosts to complete this life cycle and triphasic, having three phases of life cycle. Protozoan parasite known as plasmodium. Life cycle of plasmodium requires two hosts, human and mosquitoes for completion. So malaria needs two hosts, that is human and a mosquito. For completion, plasmodium enters the human body as sporozoids through the bite of infected female anopolis. So, female anopolis is infected. The sporozoids reach the liver cells via blood where they initially multiply. This then attack the RBCs. So, this then attacks the RBCs resulting in their rupturing. The rupture of RBCs is associated with the release of hemozoin. So there is a release of hemozoin after rupture of RBCs, a toxin which causes the chill and high recurring fever every 3 to 4 days. The female anopolis mosquito when bites an infected human being, 
the malarial parasite enters into mosquito body and undergo further development to form sporozoid that finally move to the salivary gland of the insect the bite of these mosquitoes introduce the sporozoids inside the human body thus initiating the above mentioned cycle process again the attack of malaria is preceded by tiredness headache and muscular pain malaria is characterized by recurring rigors that lasting for 6 to 10 hours that lasts for 6 to 10 hours so there are three stages the first stage is cold stage in malaria the second is hot stage third is sweating stage sweating stage so the first stage where is cold stage there is chill and shivering hot stage temperature rise to 100 degrees celsius sweating perspiration and gradual fall in temperature there are four species of plasmodium which causes four main types of malaria so there are types of malaria also the first is plasmodium vivax so causes benign tertian malaria in which fever recurs after 48 hours then plasmodium malaria causes cotton malaria in which fever appears after every 72 hours and often produces persistent subclinical malaria then comes the third one that is plasmodium falciparum causes cerebral malaria or malignant so this is a malignant one after the first first is a benign and the third one is a malignant one where fever recurs after every 48 hours and the last is plasmodium ovale causes mild tertian malaria so this is all about uh, protozoan diseases then the comes nematode disease nematode disease so in nematode disease there is ascariasis Escherichias is caused by common round worm, so it is caused by round worm. Escherichias is lumbricoids. So symptoms of this disease include internal bleeding. There is an internal bleeding as a symptom. Then muscular pain, fever, anemia, and blockage of the intestinal passage. Worm sometimes bores the intestinal epithelium and leads to some vital organs like kidneys. spinal cord brain or muscle causing injuries to the organ a healthy person acquires infection through contaminated water vegetables fruits etc the second is after escariasis is filariasis which is also known as elephantiasis it is helminthic disease caused by wucheria it is caused by wucheria the filarial worms they cause a slowly developing chronic inflammation of the organ in which they live for many years usually the lymphatic vessels of the lower limb the pathogen spread from one human being is spread from one human being to another through mosquitoes like culex so through culex it spreads from one human being to other and to less extend by anopheles and needs the disease can be prevented by taking precautions against mosquito bites so the disease can be protected prevented by taking precautions now after nematode disease there is an fungal disease fungal disease so fungal disease the dermatophytes are a group of closely related fungi they infect the skin hair and nails they cause a variety of clinical conditions collectively called as dermato phytosis so popularly called as tinea or ringworm so this is a ringworm dermatophytes include three genera trico Phytin that is infects skin, hair, and nails. Microsporum attacks the hair and skin, but usually not the nail. And epidermophytin infects the skin and nails, but not the hair. Main symptom of the disease 
are appearance of the dry scaly lesions on various parts of the body such as skin nail and scalp these lesions are accompanied by intestine itching now immunity so the overall ability to the host to fight the disease causing organism conferred by the immune system is called as immunity so definition of immunity is the overall ability to host to fight of the host to fight the disease causing organism conferred by the immune system is called immunity now study of body defense mechanism against pathogen is called immunology edward jenner is the father of immunology now lymphoid organs that is thymus lymphoid organs thymus and bursa bursa of fabricus of birds are primary lymphoid organs where lymphocytes mature and acquire antigen specificity the bone marrow of mammals is considered equivalent to avian bursa of fabricus lymph nodes spleen tonsils pears patches of the small intestine appendix are secondary lymphoids so these all are secondary lymphoids and the initial primary ones are the uh, lymph uh, bursa of fabricus well uh, the secondary lymphoid organs where lymphocytes undergo proliferation and differentiation so that's why it is called as a secondary lymphoid organs now antibodies are immunoglobulins which are produced in response to antigenic stimulation antigens are substances which when introduced into the body stimulate the production of antibodies most antigens are proteins but some are carbohydrates lipids or nucleic acids so mostly antibodies are proteins now immunoglobulins are glycoprotein made up of four polypeptide chains two heavy and two light light and heavy chains are subdivided into variable and constant regions there there are mainly of five types of discus in the has so there are five types of the immunoglobulins now innate immunoglobulin first one is innate immunity innate immunity is not specific type of defense that is present at the time of birth this is accomplished by providing different types of barriers to the entry of the foreign agents into our body now innate immunity consists of four types of barriers these are first is physical barrier so skin of our body is the main barrier which prevents entry of the microorganism mucus coating of the epithelium lining the respiratory gastrointestinal and urogenital tract also helps in trapping microbes entering our body cilia occurring in the nasal tract helps in throwing out the entrapped microorganisms so this is the first one in innate immunity that is physical barrier the second is physiological barriers so physiological barriers the oil and sweat secreted by sebaceous and sudoriferous glands saliva tears bile and acidity of gastric juices all prevents microbial growth the third one is cellular barriers so certain types of leukocytes like polymorpho uh, nuclear nucleosides neutrophils and monocytes are natural killer cells in the blood and macrophages in tissues can engulf micro viruses and cellular debris etc that is cellular barrier the last one is cytokine barrier so cytokine barrier virus infected cells secrete proteins known as interferons which protect non infected cells from further viral infections so this is of innate immunity the second is acquired immunity acquired immunity so in acquired immunity if a pathogen is able to pass the body non specific defense 
द इम्यूनिटी सिस्टम रियक्ट विद सीरीज ऑफ स्पेसिफिक डिफेंस दट अटैक द डिजीज कॉजिंग एजेंट यूनिक फीचर्स ऑफ अक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी स्पेसिफिसिटी डाइवर्सिटी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन बिटवीन सेल्फ एंड नॉन सेल्फ एंड मेमरी सो अक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स एक्टिव एंड पैसिव सो अक्वायर्ड इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स एक्टिव एंड पैसिव एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी इज रेजिस्टेंस इंड्यूस आफ्टर कॉन्टैक्ट विथ फॉरिन एंटीजेंस एग्जाम्पल माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम पैसिव इम्यूनिटी अकर्स वेन एंटीबॉडी इज प्रोड्यूस्ड आर्टिफिशियली आर इंजेक्टेड इन टू अ पर्सन टू काउंटर एक्ट एंटीजन सच एस स्नेक वेनिम The yellowish fluid cholesterol secreted by mother during the initial days of lactation has abundant antibodies to protect the infant. Now after this is immune response. In immune response the specific reactivity induced in a host by an antigen stimulus is known as immune response. It is of two types primary and secondary. So this goes on with primary and secondary so the reaction of the body's immune system to the first attack of microbes is called as primary it takes much longer time to develop because of the requirement of suitable receptor development the reaction of the body's immune system to any subsequent infection of the same microbe suitable receptor development the reaction of the body's subsequent infection of the same microbe is termed as secondary immune response this response is quicker and more intense than the primary immune response now the immune response are carried out with the help of two special types of cell that is b lymphocytes lymphocytes and t lymphocytes so t lymphocytes or t cells when triggered off by antigens produce a clone of t cells such as cytoxin or killer t cells helper t cells suppressor t cells and memory t cells now the b1 b lymphocytes or b cells produce antibodies and therefore generate antibody mediated or humoral immunity after that is antigen presenting cells so antigen presenting cells that is apcs are specialized cells which include macrophages b lymphocytes and dendritic cells example lagerhans cells of epidermis of skin after that is vaccination in vaccination it is a process of development of immunization against a particular disease by inoculation of harmless antigenic material like attenuated pathogen or its toxoid into a healthy person it develops due to formation of memory cells by the immune system immunization is a process by which the body produces antibodies against the antigens of vaccine preventable disease through administration of specific vaccine vaccine is a suspension of killed attenuated pathogenic microorganisms then this is about vaccine now hypersensitivity or allergy so once you get an allergy it is excessive immune response to common antigens called allergens called as allergens common examples of allergens are mites in dust pollen animal dander etc now autoimmunity there is something called as autoimmunity in autoimmunity is a condition in which structural or functional damage is produced so by action of immunological component cells or antibodies against normal component components of the body so it actually implies injury of self so here it is a injury of self example of autoimmune disease are rheumatoid arthritis insulin dependent diabetes
सो दिस आर ऑटो इम्यूनिटी आफ्टर दैट इज ऑर्गेन ट्रांसप्लांटेशन सो ऑर्गेन ट्रांसप्लांटेशन it is a implantation of organ or tissue from one part of the body to another or from person to from person that is a donor to a recipient tissue matching blood group matching are essential before undertaking any graft or transplant this the patient has to take immunosuppressants all his life the body is able to differentiate self and non self and the cell mediated immune response is responsible for the graft rejection so now this is about organ transplantation now aids so aids or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is a deficiency of immune system there is a reduction of number of helper t cells which stimulates antibody production by b cells resulting in loss of natural defense against viral infection hiv is a retrovirus that attacks helper t cells so helper t cells Have been attacked here. Its genome consists of two single-stranded RNA strands. After the entrance of the virus into the body of the person, the virus enters into macrophages where RNA genome of the virus replicates to form viral DNA with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme. So there is an a reverse transcriptase. reverse transcriptase enzyme this viral dna gets incorporated into host cells dna and directs the infected cells to produce viruses the virus of aids is transmitted by transfusion of infected blood or blood products use of contaminated needles and syringe sexual intercourse with an infected partner without a condom and from infected mother to child through placenta now the incubation period of aids range between 6 months to 10 years Six months to ten years. AIDS can be diagnosed by ELISA test. It can be diagnosed by ELISA test and Western blotting test and Western blotting test. Western blotting test is employed for confirmation of ELISA positive cases. now after aids we move on to cancer now cancer or malignant neoplasm is a disease of uncontrolled proliferation of cells without any differentiation it commonly originates in the tissue in which the cells are regularly replaced by mitosis now cancer cells appears to have lost this property as a result this cancerous cells just continue to divide giving rise to masses of cells called tumors so it just goes on dividing and gives a masses of cells called tumors now neoplasm or tumor is of two types that is benign tumor or malignant tumor so there is two type benign and malignant so benign this is a solid neoplasm or tumor that stops growing by itself and does not invade other tissues and remain confined to a particular site malignant tumor in cell grows very rapidly invading and damaging the surrounding normal tissue so cells slowed from such tumor these distant sites to blood and whenever they get lodged in the body they start a new tumor there this property is called as metastasis so they go on continuing metastasis is the most feared property of malignant tumor so after that causes of cancer chemical and physical agents that can cause cancer are called as carcinogens so the ones which can cause cancer is called as cancerogens they uh, these are over exposure to ionizing radiations like x rays uv rays gamma rays etc which literally punch holes in the dna breaking the correct genetic sequence then chemicals chemicals like nic nicotine caffeine steroids and arsenic air pollutants cause cancers of lungs brain 
breast or blood. Then viruses, viruses which include the human papillovirus, the human T cells, lymphatic virus and hepatitis B virus. So after that is oncogens. Oncogens and tumor suppressor genes. Techniques such as radiology, CT scan, MRI scan are very useful to detect cancers of the internal organs. The common approaches for treatment of cancer are surgery, radiation therapy and immunotherapy. So, treatment, the common approach is either surgery or radiation therapy and immunotherapy. After this is drugs and alcohol abuse. Now, drug addiction, drug. Drug addiction or drug abuse is taking drugs for purpose other than clinical use. In amount, concentration or frequency that impair physical, physiological and psychological function of the body. Now opiate or narcotics. The first drug is opiate, opioids or narcotics. So other drugs derived from the dried latex of undried capsular Fruits of poppy plant, papaver somniferum, opioids bind to specific opioid receptor present in our central nervous system. So it is present in the CNS, central nervous system and gastrointestinal tract. They are also called as painkillers. Opioids have narcotic, analgesic, astringent and sedative effect. Types of opioid narcotic are natural, semi-synthetic. And synthetic. After opioid is cocaine. So cocaine is natural coca alkaloid obtained from leaves of coca plant. Native to South American, cocaine has vasoconstrictor properties and therefore is a good local anesthetic. So cocaine is a good local anesthetic. It is chewed, eaten or sniffed in its powdered form or taken as a drink. It is a powerful CNS stimulant. CNS stimulant it is and induces a sense of well-being and pleasure and delays fatigue. Its overdose causes hallucinations. So overdose of, co overdose of cocaine causes hallucination. Hemp or cannabis is cannabis compound obtained from hemp. Obtained from leaves, resins and flowering tops of hemp are called cannabinoids which interact with cannabinoid receptor present principally in the brain. The flower tops, leaves and resins of cannabis plant are used in various combinations to produce hashish, ganja, bhang and marijuana. Other well-known plants with hallucinogenic properties are atropa, belladonna and Datura. These days, cannabinoids are being abused by some sports person. So, drugs like barbiturates, amphetamines, benzodiazepines, lysergic acid, diethylamides, that is LSD, and other sense similar drugs that are normally used as medicines to help patients cope with mental illness, like depression and insomnia, are, are often abused. Now, after that is tobacco. Tobacco is used for smoking, chewing and snuffing. Its mainly stimulating component is a poisonous volatile alkanoid nicotine which causes addiction. High concentration of nicotine paralyzes nerve cells. Now other harmful components of tobacco smoke besides the poisonous nicotine are carbon monoxide, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and tar. So addiction and dependence. Addiction and dependence. Addiction is a psychological treatment to certain effects such as euphoria and a temporary feeling of well being associated with drugs and alcohol. Now dependence becomes the tendency of the body to manifest a characteristic and unpleasant withdrawal syndrome. So addiction is basically just addicted to some stuff. If suppose Cocaine, taking an example, you are addicted to it but you can be out of this. Dependence is something which is 
becoming a tendency you are not able to stop you are getting dependent on cocaine that is dependence now effects or symptoms of drug abuse reckless behavior vandalism and violence coordination of body parts is not proper working of nervous and muscular systems are influenced disturb peristalsis and secretion of digestive enzymes are some effects of the drug abuse